it's fireproof. You'll see. Renogy comes out with their new smart battery, which these are 100 amp hour batteries, which are Bluetooth and are self-heating. Now, Renogy makes a ton of different products, including solar controllers. They also make inverters, not to mention other batteries, solar panels, and more. These have a seven year warranty and a 5,000 life cycle span. These can last for almost 13 and a half years being charged to 100% and depleted down to zero until they reach 80% capacity. These are also IP67 rated, so they are waterproof. They are also UL94 listed, so they are fire resistant, and that's what we're gonna play with a little bit later as we get into the video. But they also have a ton of other safety features like short circuit protection, low temp cutoff, and more, but they have heaters, so these will be able to be utilized in low temperature environments if you happen to be an RVer, or if you're maybe a fisherman who does some cold water or cold weather fishing, these might be a good option for you. Now these are only 12 volt batteries, so you can't put them in series if you want a 24 volt type system you will have to put them in parallel if you want to expand your amp hours and you can put eight of these into parallel so that can give you over 800 amp hours especially since each one of these batteries is actually over 100 amp hours now one thing i like about smart batteries is that you can actually eliminate a shunt if you want to keep things a little bit more simple i'll show you that setup in just a minute but with a smart battery, it shows you all kinds of good features like your amp hours, how much charge is going out as far as its draw. Now these can handle a full 100 amps coming in as far as charging, and they can also handle a full 100 amp discharge rate, and that's consistent. And what's nice about having the Bluetooth feature is that these are actually 104 or about 105 amp hour batteries. So Renogy is actually giving you more than what you're buying. But again, these are a little bit more on a premium price. Now what is actually cool is that during my discharge test, which was the first test I did, I ended up doing a 90 watt discharge test, which to simulate maybe more of a CPAP machine, those can run anywhere from about 55 watts up to 120, depending if you might have a humidifier on it. So I went with a 90 watt discharge and I ended up finding out that I got more than actually stated. I ended up getting 107 amp hours, just a little bit over out of this battery right here. And this is the one that's 104. This one here has 105.7 and it ended up lasting over 15 hours on that discharge test Which you will have to admit that is pretty impressive At least they're giving you more than what you're actually buying or at least what it's rated at versus getting less Which then leads to a little bit of disappointment So we're gonna go ahead and go do some testing We're gonna throw this in the RV a little bit do some distance testing with the Bluetooth I'll also do a submersion test where I'm gonna put this underwater We'll take the battery apart and look at a few other features and yeah we are gonna burn it up a little bit too for fun. Now when you do buy this, they will give you terminal bolts that are 12 millimeters in length and 16 millimeters in length. That way, if you have more battery terminal connections that you're putting on here, at least you have enough room. And these are M8s, by the way, if you wanted to know. But let's go ahead and do some testing. Now I did place this in my fridge so I could test the low temp cutoff and also the heating pads. If we take a look at the temp, it's either 11.6 or 11.3 Celsius, which it is kind of nice you can toggle that back and forth and all of our cells are still balanced. And the heating mode is currently not on. Now this is where having a battery with low temp cutoff is important, especially lithium batteries. This can actually damage the cells if you try to charge it without low temp and a heater. So right now as we try to charge this with a 20 amp charger, we have 3.6 amps going in. But it's not charging the battery, but now that the heater is on, I'm assuming the 3.6 amps is going to the heating pads on this battery. And that's drawing about 57 watts as we look at the little meter right here. If we take a look at an infrared camera, you can see the battery temperature is extremely low, still 25 degrees, as the garage is currently around 60 degrees, as you can see by the secondary thermometer. But there is no charging current going into the battery right now, and the heating pad is still on. So as again, if we look at the infrared camera, you can see the bottom of the battery is where the heating pads are on this one. And it's already up to about 70 degrees after 10 minutes, and the side of the battery is still extremely cold. So it will take a little while for this to heat up, so we'll let it sit for about 30 minutes. Okay, so that was just about 40 minutes and it is now charging and the heating pad is now off. You can see about 3.6 amps are now going into the battery and I didn't see that switch over until about 43.5 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Okay, so you remember how I said you can eliminate a shunt, which these are nice because they can tell you information about how much power is coming in and out of your batteries, but you end up having more wiring that you have to do. So if you eliminate all that, you can then have something a little bit more like this where you can eliminate some of the things like having to purchase a shunt. If you were to purchase a shunt, these are typically around $120 and maybe $150 depending on when you buy it. So that could be something you may not need if you just want some basic tracking when it comes to having a smart battery, which is some of the nice features about it. Now at the moment I do have about 200 watts of solar coming into this battery, but I do have a load on it right now. As you can see right here, I have a load of about 16.8 amps. And this is mainly because I am discharging this into here, which then goes over to a large battery bank that I happen to have over here. That's normally what I would do when I had both of these big batteries here, so I could then just power dump if I had excess power and I needed it into my AC system, really, versus just having it storing here in my DC. So I can put, you know, power in or out, depending on which way I want to go with my setup. So now that I've turned off the load, you can see I have about 8.9 amps coming in. That's from the solar that's up above. And it's just a nice feature having Bluetooth now in the batteries. This is just something you're going to start seeing in more and more lines everywhere. So um, you see it in the cheaper lines. You see it in the expensive lines as well. So what we will do is a range test just to see how well the Bluetooth works. Now for me, as far as Bluetooth, I really only need it to be able to work inside my RV trailer because obviously I'm going to be monitoring it mainly from there or if I was just hanging out outside. But so far we have a connection here, so maybe 20 feet. The door is open, by the way. Okay, so I still have a connection here at the back of the RV and that's about 35 to 40 feet away with a lot of obstacles. So, I mean, that's more than enough for most people they are going to need, you know, Bluetooth communication as far as a battery that's just going to be either in a boat or an RV. So that's more than enough, but we'll see how much farther I can go before it kind of disconnects here. Just kind of keep on moving back. Still working. And there we go. So disconnected there. I'd say that's a good 50 feet from the actual door because the RV is 35 feet alone. So... Now, if you thought about using this battery like in a boat or something and you happen to submerge it, maybe you sink your boat. I've seen it a ton of times when I used to work at the boat shop. Um, you know, that would pretty much eliminate your battery. So this one being IP67 rated, meaning it's actually waterproof, which, you know, even in the manual, it says water resistant. So I've been spraying this for a while just for fun because, again, I don't have anything else to do. So. Um, I'm actually going to throw it in this bucket of water for a little bit. Nothing like throwing a lithium battery in water and just leaving it there for a while. So we'll see what happens. I'll come back in a bit and we'll see if it's just completely leaking or whatever. But we're going to take the battery apart and we'll see how much water is actually intruded inside. Well, and after soaking the battery for several minutes, still got a signal. So let's go ahead and dunk her in. All right, we'll come back later. Okay, this battery's been in here for a little more than a half hour, and that's this one right here. And still getting a signal, sorry if you can't see that too much, but um, still putting out a signal inside the Bluetooth, um, or inside that bucket of water, so Bluetooth signal is still, you know, being able to be transmitted through that. Nothing so far, so the Pro model is the only one that I know of that's actually, you know, IP67. It's also vibration resistant too, so supposedly if you were to have this in an off-road vehicle, it can take a decent amount of abuse, but let's go ahead and get it out of there and then uh, kind of check this thing out. All right, vibration resistant. Now this thing is supposed to be vibration resistant and maybe not so much impact resistant, right? So that little demonstration there was probably not ideal, but you know, if you're gonna do it, you might as well go 100% out, you know, kind of like a honey badger. Hey, it's still working. Sweet. Mm. 
well, now that I've taken some aggressions out on this battery, it still works. And just so you know, this is battery number two. And I did label that as number two up here on this one. Still getting a Bluetooth signal, still has voltage. So let's go take that thing apart. Okay, on top of the lid, you can see you have your O-ring that goes all the way around this thing, plus additional O-rings up here. So this thing is super sealed as far as when we did our water test. There's not a drop in here at all. You can see just a little bit there that's left. But look at the BMS on this thing in this massive heat sink. So it looks like this is probably our over temperature protection. So we'll take this guy off. And then these look like our balance leads that are over here. And then these guys here look like we're going to have to take those off actually so we can get this off of here and kind of see where everything is going. But this is a pretty crazy BMS on here. This is something, um, you know, much more sophisticated than some of the stuff I've seen on other videos that, you know, obviously some more popular guys do. But now I don't know if you can see that, but there's already a little red light right here showing probably an error and we have a blinking light there. We're gonna go ahead and take off this zip tie so we can start disconnecting stuff. I still have signal on the app. We disconnect these. Right, let's see if we can get this BMS off of here. Wow, look at that. That's pretty cool how they just did it all in one plate. Makes it really easy for assembly, that's for sure. This is this is a pretty nice piece. You can see all the MOSFETs that are down under there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me take that apart. Okay, so check this out. All of the MOSFETs, they have these all soldered onto the circuit board, and then they're actually all soldered onto the bottom of the heat sink here so and there's a ton of them look at all of those things on each side all the way down that's a lot that's pretty crazy all right check that out that's what that was okay i was wondering if this was the heating pad it looked like it but check that out ev prismatic cells these are really nice and no damage at all from when we were tossing it around you gotta admit that's a pretty that's a pretty durable case when it comes to this and i don't know about you but this is a pretty well constructed battery from uh, a lot of the reviews and comparisons i've seen this is pretty nice and the few that i've taken apart I'm no expert as far as when it comes to these types of batteries. I've done my share, but when it comes to obviously taking these apart, um, I think we all know who the who the main person is, but this is definitely nice, and I think he'd even agree that this is, this is a really well-constructed battery, but you are paying a premium for it, but let's go burn this up. Now, when it comes to this thing being fire resistant, it's really just supposed to stop the way that it burns, I guess. So if you take a heat source to this and it starts to melt the case, once that heat source is gone, it's supposed to basically, well, stop, I guess. So we'll kind of see what happens. We'll burn this thing up a little bit and, you know, just see if it actually stops burning and melting or if it continues and possibly could start a fire. So here we go. Well, that's pretty good. It stopped actually, you know, staying on fire, but look at it melt. But you normally when you catch plastic on fire like this, it'll just keep on going. And so, yeah, burn, fire. 
Huh. Well, if you've ever seen plastic cases burn, they will just kind of keep on going. Like this part down here, that'll just keep on melting and keep on cooking. So that's actually pretty good so far. All right, now instead of such a direct flame, we'll just kind of put this one on the side here and just kind of see how it does. But you can definitely see it melting that thing. Look at that. Not going through, but. Distortion. Yeah, look at that. But it's not doing what other plastics do. I mean, they will stay on fire and just keep on going. I mean, this thing here actually, uh, you know, does put itself out. So I guess that's what it's supposed to do. And look at the inside there. It's, um, you know, kind of still intact. I mean, it's obviously got holes in it, but still hard. And the casing is still structurally there. This is still hot, so look at it mold. Yeah, look at that. Awesome. Who doesn't love to play with fire and stuff? I wonder if I'll be able to get another case from them. Now when it comes to Renogy's batteries, there's over 60 safety features that we didn't even talk about. We only talked about the basic ones. These things have a lot of protections as far as over current, over voltage, over temp, and more. Now as far as the Bluetooth and how much power it takes, I charged this just about 10 days ago and so far it is still maintaining 100%. I would assume it would probably take 30 days for this to drop about 1%. So the Bluetooth is not using very much power at all. Now when it comes to Renogy products, you either love them or you hate them, just like anything else. I don't personally like Ford, so I don't buy them because I just haven't had good luck with the product. And it's the same thing with any company out there. I've had good luck with the Renogy products. I did have a Wanderer solar controller go out a little bit early, but that can happen to pretty much any product in any company. So you'll have to let me know what you guys think about this battery because whether you like the group or the product or not, you gotta admit this is a pretty good build and this thing definitely seems like it would hold up for whatever it is you wanted to put it through. Now when it comes to its price, well it is a little bit more premium just like anything else out there. You have premium prices and you have low prices. So that's up to you whether you wanna buy it or not. I will have links down in the description below. And if you guys have any questions, there is a link called Ask Me and I hope to see you guys in the next video. This is definitely not gonna be waterproof anymore.